so welcome to this session so i am sainath along with uh, sanil and uh, shiv to uh, again talk on why how and what is open source uh, i think we have been going through this in multiple ways to look at understand what it means uh, how to contribute and why should we do this so we will probably try to see it with some some perspective that we have thought through and uh, we have tried to simplify it to an extent where anybody should be getting motivated to contribute without any inhibitions that's what is our intention let me just so so even before we get into what why and how i mean why did we even want to uh, think about this was a question that i got into my mind when i first got into open source and stuff like that so i while i was trying to research we have seen lot of data um, since morning and probably will be seeing more um, two things that uh, struck me were these two numbers while i was doing some googling um, i don't know any guesses about what these numbers could be there are some surveys which are done what could be a 1% and 98% any thoughts sorry successful project 98% is it 1% ha huh? <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one okay i think let me show that i think it's better you we see it so there was a survey conducted only 1% of people said that open source projects are not important and 98% uh, is 98% of the code base contains some open source content in it no matter what it is so i think this is a good enough precursor for us to really see and dwell into it and understand more about uh, what uh, open source is all about and uh, how to contribute do we know who this person is any yeah amazing i did not know <laughs> okay do we so, have chocolates to give to sorry do we have chocolates chocolates and with yeah. and with yes we will get him <laughs> i think he deserves it <laughs> so so he he is the guy who said uh, free software is more about liberty than about its price and cost whatever so what you said is right and he has a list of things for his achievement sanil want to add Can something to yeah yeah uh, first of all i think uh, this kind of a topic probably at a wrong time <laughs> i think we are all like after a heavy lunch and some technical sessions this is a very lighter session on open source what we are talking about um like uh, sai mentioned we just uh, talk about what is open source what is the significance what's the value for you i expected more developers but uh, uh, i see more uh, senior members they are more interested in open source today so richard stallman i think uh, some of you may be knowing i think he other than whatever is written there i think he is one of the key members who started the open source movement especially fos the freedom for software uh, that movement itself is started by him uh, if you know linux you know linux right who is the founder of linux kernel okay so he's in fact linus torvalds is more prominent than richard stallman but for a linux distribution distribution do you know what is the percentage of linux kernel the majority of the linux distribution as a whole distribution most of the components are coming from gnu the compilers libraries and so on and so forth it was lacking a kernel that is where linux all was built uh, the kernel and then the rest is history right linux is one of the top most open source projects today productionized and all of you are holding it in your hand or in your pockets right android is based on linux this is one of the set most successful project successful projects okay i don't know whether this question is how much significant in this crowd uh, in the i mean outside we had been uh, we have been talking about uh, talking with some of the students uh, we thought more students and developers 
Oh, many of you are already having a job. But more than job, maybe we can replace this with, can we create more industry credibility? Or can I build more competency? So maybe that way we can change. And we'll see in the session. Yeah. Thanks, Anil. So first we'll go with the what part. Uh, then I, I'll probably set the stage to some extent so that we can cover the why and how after that. Uh, so fundamentally, uh, uh, when I first thought about open source, I thought, what's the big deal? So I know about uh, everything about it and what is so great about what. But as I started researching on it and understanding more about it, trying to understand how do we qualify it, what it means, uh, I then saw that it might be easier to understand it by knowing what it is not. And uh, that's where I thought I'll start with uh, the closed software uh, where it's the proprietary part where uh, most companies have been doing it for a long time. And we are all well aware of it as to how that ecosystem works and what kind of a um, control we have on anything that is getting delivered to us. So that way, this is the, this is our traditional model that always people have followed. Though open source also is in existence for a long time. Uh, I, I felt knowing this, the way it works is probably a better way to know uh, what open source could be. Where we have uh, the same kind of a setup, probably a community, uh, maybe an organization, everything is there. But then what we develop is finally open and available to us, the source code. Uh, that is one of the simplest way of looking at it and probably the uh, purest form of uh, open source uh, uh, product that we can think about where we have the uh, code available for modification, redistribution and whatever you want to do it with it, do it. Um, and it's, it's publicly accessible. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of nuances to this. Uh, in a simple way, we have put this as a as a basic understanding that we can have about uh, uh, an open source, what what it is in its simplest simplest form. Um, some more thoughts on uh, basically again, if we are trying to, I think even the earlier presenter was telling about it. Uh, let's not associate it with its cost, it being uh, free of uh, money or uh, the other usage rights and stuff like that. So there could be a lot of variations in that. Um, uh, fundamentally, when we have the source code with us available for us to modify and take care of what we want to do uh, and propagate it, uh, maybe adhering to whatever licenses and agreements are supposed to be signed. I think we are good with it being a, um, uh, uh, I mean, we have certain kind of control with us on that. That's the bottom line that I wanted to emphasize on. And so, so this is what it is. The, the specific access rights, yeah, just keep that. Let's uh, have that in mind. Uh, because at times, uh, companies have gone into, got into trouble um, trying to use uh, open source products without really reading everything. Uh, it may not have the effect that they think that they should have. So some of the aspects that we try to put here are like the common place uh, for having our source code so that everybody can access it because we are doing a community development and it should be uh, visible to uh, all the members uh, involved or even whoever wants to get involved. And uh, 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 there are many different uh, uh, modes in which it can be achieved. And uh, in the morning also somebody was saying that even we should start using some kind of a open source based uh, repositories and uh, ecosystems than using proprietary ones there. So that we in the true sense propagate uh, open source culture and bring that uh, rigor into everything that we are doing. So there is no, I mean basically we are trying to emphasize here that there is no bar for language, um, technology, or where we want to preserve it, as long as it's accessible, as long as you can get uh, uh, contribute, uh, there ends the matter. 
So that is how we would like to uh, have it. Uh, Shiva, you would like to add something more? So you want me to what part? What part of the open source? So if you ask me what part, it is about like if I have an idea and if I need to get an input on those ideas, not just a source code, this is what open source for me means. I mean that is open source for me because getting an idea, when you, when you float your ideas and if you ask for a suggestion, I am sure you will get the best ideas. Where that is the next level, how you make that idea into the solution and which can be used, that is the next step. Mm -hmm. But if somebody asks me how we want to use a, what's a open source, this is what floating my ideas to get the feedback. Excellent. Thanks, Shiva. So, so now, so basically, now we have a, um, um, a whole lot of um, um, uh, uh, ways in which we can look at it uh, in the sense there are a lot of source code, I mean open source products and components that are available, probably you cannot do copy left or maybe in some places you can do. So knowing all that we should be able to move around and do meaningful development. Now since, since it is a community development that we are talking about and there are no uh, restrictions on who can contribute. Um, bringing in some kind of a focus to it is as important uh, as as taking the contributions. Now that is where I as I earlier said it will also have a structure uh, where we have um, I mean this, this probably is going to be the structure any open source body would, is going to happen uh, have and maybe certain uh, changes to take care of the specific needs of those uh, uh, communities would have been uh, made. Uh, so we should have a governing body where they take care of the um, uh, budgets, the operational structure, um, the kind of uh, direction that we want to take. Um, uh, like for example, in uh, most of the open source communities, the users of the uh, product uh, generally do the give the direction where um, uh, the kind of requirements they have flows back into the governance body through the premium members who are part of the governing body or it could be even through some of the surveys that we conduct and uh, uh, take the inputs and prioritize those requirements and put them for uh, the engineering team to come up with design and then manage the projects I mean, it is run as any other project to that extent there will be no difference. Uh, in fact we need to have those uh, teams working to produce the results for a deterministic output else nobody can rely on our product. So that, that way there will be no difference here. The, the primary difference will be in the uh, developers, uh, vendors and users, the way they are contributing to this ecosystem and developers we have no limit. We can go across, anybody in the world can contribute. So I mean the, the best part is the continuity that I see that we achieve here. Like we lose an employee in our company. Um, and certain things get lost with them. Now here people can keep moving but still we have the continuity because they are not associated from any individual association or a company. Um, and also since multiple people are looking at it, uh, I, I have felt that single point failures are much less prevalent uh, in an open source kind of a system as compared to a small set of developers contributing in a company uh, where uh, many times we get into a lot of issues about handing over and taking and stuff like that. Yeah, that is what I think is the summary there. Um, so these are some of the sample open source projects that we have listed. I think there could be many. You would like to add anything? So uh, before I add anything, we have uh, two good news. One is we have more chocolates. <laughs> Second uh, is uh, we have a very simple method for you to join an open source community at the end of this end of our, our session. Very very simple stuff to associate with and connect with, uh, collaborate with. 
Uh, as I was uh, talking about uh, the governance structure, it is no uh, different from any other organization structure. Your company, your college or institutions, you will have some people to govern, some people to do all the engineering stuff and of course you will have a community to operate on, collaborate on. It's, it's similar. But if you see all the open source projects, these components can be thin or thick. The governance can be very thin. Only one maintainer, he is the developer, uh, he is the reviewer, uh, he is everything. Probably he only brands, hey this is my project, you can use for this, everything, right? So the governance, engineering and community is one person. It's like a startup, right? You do a receptionist job to CTO to CA job. So similarly, in open source also, this can be there. But what we are trying to bring is that when you go out to see an open source project, you will see GitHub. Now somebody will ask you, uh, GitHub, how do you work in GitHub or things like that. This, is, this aspect is a technical aspect. You can learn GitHub or Gitty or GitLab in maybe one hour going through a document. But why that is there is more important. Because any open source project you see, we need to have a common place to have the code. We need to have some developers to develop. We need to have a community to talk about, right, or use it. That's what we are trying to bring it here, that you need to have a governance that, so that you think about what is the purpose of this project and who will be benefited out of this. And second is engineering, yeah, of course, without developers, yeah, there is no open source project. And community generally, there are community contributors on uh, evangelizing the project or branding the project and also users. Users are very, very important. Because unless you have an open source project user, the project will not be successful, correct? Yes or no? You are here? You are with us? Okay. Tea time is over. I think tea break you had, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, you can go to the next slide. So these project examples are just a GitHub projects which we have uh, put here. There are so many projects. The previous session, Signos was another project. So uh, whatever we have shown is in GitHub, but if you go uh, out in the open source, you will see Git, GitLab and stuff like that. So some, some key terms to uh, understand. So we have this open source, free software, freeware. So this is where, so freeware, uh, fun, basically people give free uh, software for use. So you don't get the source code there. You cannot modify that product or you don't have any say on that as to what has to happen and stuff like that. So but that's not the case with free software or open source where we get the uh, uh, source code of the product and we can do certain uh, value additions that we think are uh, appropriate for that. So the other part of this, uh, um, the organization says that. Uh, Sorry, just uh, yeah. interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Can you yes. go to the previous slide? So this, uh, I don't know. I mean, no, almost all of you might have seen open source free software and freeware. Can anyone tell what is the difference between freeware and free software? It's an open, open book question. Software freedom is like uh, you are free to choose any software you want to use. And freeware is like a software that is free of cost. It's not paid, maybe that kind of thing. Freeware is kind of free of cost. Yes. Because it is there in the state. <laughs> okay. So free software, when you say free software, what are the freedoms you get? Software means you can use any software you want. You are not restricted to. But that nobody can stop you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you decide what software you want to use. Nobody can stop that. I think someone here mentioned about it, the freedoms of free software. Yes, I think he deserves a chocolate. Not only chocolate, I think you can clap your hands. You're free, right? Your hands are free. Okay, I'm just trying to make more interactive because all of us are a little down because after the lunch and all the talks through the day. It's very heavy, right? And one day conference is really heavy. Okay, so one key point here is that Open source and free software go hand in hand, in general. 
and this free software that free as in not as per, with respect to cost that free software free is free okay that's why i was earlier mentioning that the open source software can be sold for a cost you agree any disagreement good question very good question i think that question needs a chocolate see this is advantage you ask question you will get chocolate you have mobile phone android or mac i apple both you have android phone uh you got it free the android phone the android phone which you have you got it free don't say you got it as a gift right see basically what happens is that when you get a product out of open source it can be directly an open source just vanilla piece or it can be added something on top of it that also can be open source see in fact what you see is that okay let me make it simpler and then come to your question most of the cases this free software the key concept is that i got a free software not freeware free software means i got a software from say babu and he gave me as a free software means he gave me the freedom freedom to edit study compile modify redeploy or de redistribute no ties okay but he has only one condition when you give the software please pass on the freedom he doesn't say that you can't charge so the point is that taking that software that free software i modify i create a new product i sell the product to you okay for say 1 dollar i sell it to you but you have the rights to get the source code you can take that source code you can make a product and all these things you can do but i cannot give you the product and i can i can't say that i will not give the source code that is against the free software principle okay so in that aspect in that aspect that's another good question okay now we go back now we have to go back what is open source the source code is open and that's all i think open under certain conditions certain how do you conditions. how do you get conditions by the license of it license right so open source is nothing but the source code is open and then you said license right now license can be decided by who is actually making that open source software yeah. correct many open source software if you go and see the license you cannot use that open source for commercial products you can go and check now some are only academic use even personal usage is not really this thing but academic usage is i mean agreed so the license different kind of licenses are there if you go to gnu there are a lot of licenses and now one more concept is that the sum of these licenses are compatible with fos free software foundation some are not compatible with it which are the licenses compatible with free software license means which provides the freedom okay so now what happens is that when you say software is free software it always comes with freedom whatever license you put any license you put on top of the freedom it is a violation one question please uh isn't it a violation of freedom to say that you you like if if you have a software which says like gpl right like if you use this software you have to contribute back to the software isn't that a violation of okay the freedom so, to sell a product that you make by using that software okay I, one point i want to clarify in that uh, because that is very important point with respect to an open source concept but you repeat the question once again okay uh for example i, I understand the gpl license that is there 
So if you are using GPL license code in your own um, software, then by the virtue of using the GPL license code, you are obliged to make your own software a GPL license software. So in that sense, this is not free in the freedom sense because yeah, it, you're, you're restricting the uh, user of the your software by saying that you have to yourself become a free software. Okay. Your software, are you modifying it for use in that? In that case, you have to do that. But in case you are just using it as a basis, then it's not, it may not be necessary for you to give away your code. So there are various nuances to this thing and best is ask a lawyer before you commit to anything. And Harald Valte has had a lot of uh, run-ins with uh, GPL enforcing and things like that. And those are think are case studies that one should look at. Well, thanks Sachin uh, partially answering that. Uh, so I'll come back to one myth generally what we have. In between he just tried to mention most of us may have that concept. Open source, you take a open source, you modify, then the modification should be given to the public. Again back, this is not right. Okay, this is absolutely not right. You take an open source, you modify, you create a product, you use it, you don't need to give the source code back. I don't find any license saying that it's absolutely not possible to track, first of all. Correct? Now, what is important? What is important is that the freedom of software means that you modify. You use it, it's okay. But you modify. Uh, 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 I didn't get your name. Archit. Archit. Yeah. Okay. So I took an open source software, I modified, I created a new product and then I given to Archit. Now as per the free software policy or the principle, he has all the freedom to get what freedom I got. As per the free software definition, not as per the license. If it is a false compliant license, all these four freedom to be given. There may be a lot of other things in license. So you should be very, very clear about license versus this. A false if you go, four or five freedoms are there. So any license compliant with these freedoms will be false compliant license. But that license can have a lot of other conditions, which doesn't violate this freedom. Okay. Now, Source code doesn't need to be given back, but when you transfer the product, the person has the right to get the source code. Say you get Android phones, right? If you read the brochure of Android phones, it will be written that there are software, open source software components used this in product. If you want the source code, please contact. Whether it is made by Google, Samsung, Nokia, doesn't matter. If you write to them, they have to give the source code to you. Interesting, you want to go and try? They may charge maybe $5, $6 for the media. They can't charge for it, but they can charge for the media or the transportation or whatever. But they have to give. Okay, so that's the difference between free software and the licensing aspect. Now there is one more significant question, uh, Sachin partially answered that question. You take a GPL code. Again, when you say GPL code, it's partial because GPL has got V2 and V3 or even different LGPL, different type of GPL licenses are available. Now, if you have a GPL, let's take V2. You take that, like Sachin mentioned, if you modify that same code you modify, that becomes GPL. Now, you have another proprietary code, for example. You want to interface with this. If you are using a direct interface, your proprietary code will become GPL. That's why many of the corporate organizations are hesitant to use more GPL code. That is one of the reasons Apache V2 license is very, very popular. Because Apache can be mixed with the proprietary code. 
you can do commercial deployments easily. That's why it, it has become very popular, especially among corporates. But Linux, if you see Linux, there's a beautiful trick there. Linux kernel is GPL. You know that? Linux kernel is GPL. Now, whatever applications run on the Linux box, say for example, you get Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu is free, open source, all these things you say. But the applications run on Ubuntu, do you get source code for all the applications? All the applications on top of Ubuntu doesn't need to be open source. Then what is the trick? Trick is that the libraries on the Linux kernel, the GNU libraries, are written in LGPL license. Okay? So one side is GPL, it's a kernel, right? You need to go. The other side is LGPL. The other side can be proprietary. So proprietary can go through LGPL to GPL. It's not as direct as this, but this is the way it is happened in Linux. So Linux box, when you get Ubuntu, kernel is open source. You can get the source code, but all the applications you cannot get the source code. Ah, that's a good question. Open source? No, no, no. I want to give another name. Soda Foundation. <laughs> all the Soda Foundation projects are open source. Okay, Kubernetes is open source. Prometheus, CoreDNS, Cygnus, all are open source. Now, free software, most of the compliant licenses, the FOSS, whatever freedoms are given, right? All are compatible. Even Apache is compatible with FOSS. So, in that way, sort of foundation project, most of the prominent projects are under FOSS compliant license. Linux is a very good example because most of the Linux comp uh, components are GPL or LGPL. A license list, if you see, there are so many number of uh, FOSS compliant licenses. Freeware, WinZip, WinRAR, many of them. Right? So this is just giving us an architecture of there are many projects. Um, so now that they have been organized in such a way that we have a foundation and sub foundations and under that projects. So this is an extension to the governance that we spoke about. Otherwise, it will become unmanageable. So that is just to give a high level view about how we are structured. For example, in case of Soda Foundation, we are under Linux Foundation. We are a sub foundation there and uh, uh, similar to CNCF. So, so that is what, what is it and these are all the projects that are there and they can be part of any sub foundation or a foundation itself. Okay, some I think you already spoke about one or two myths. Maybe we can check for more. Open for open source project means Linux. Myth. Yeah, yeah. Myth or a fact. Myth. I think chocolate has to be given then. <laughs> True. You are right. That way is not there. Huh? Okay. See. Next one. Open source is free. I think we discussed this. Yeah. I think one more chocolate. Who, who said that? You are supposed to get two, is it? <laughs> Which is the other one? Okay, okay. So you need to be enough open to share it. Yeah. Be loud. <laughs> okay. Open source software can work with proprietary slash closed source. I think we discussed this at length. Fact. It's like some teachers, right? They will only teach for the question paper. <laughs> <laughs> Linux Foundation is for Linux only. Yeah, just now I said no, Soda Foundation is only. <laughs> Correct. So, open source is developed by students or developers in part time only. Yeah, I, I don't know who is supposed to be given chocolate, okay? Big louder, guys. <laughs> okay. You will end up giving chocolates to everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, inferior to commercial software. You said 1% that time. <laughs> you cannot say this as myth. This is fact. <laughs> <laughs> 
Myth, right? Is it a myth or a fact? It's a myth. Yeah. I mean, no, I just said because earlier we got a response one percent. <laughs> okay. Okay. So next, uh, I think uh, just to summarize, uh, like we discussed on many aspects, um, we have our what part covered to some degree of extent as to what is open source and all that. Now let's get into the why and how part. Oh, this you don't. Yeah, you need this. So time is less. I will uh, quickly run through because it's all we have taken time. You can actually uh, visit our booth, uh, sort of foundation booth. We can discuss length and breadth of it. Uh, so it is also important uh, to understand because uh, what we are trying to understand what is open source and uh, why we need open source and how to be part of the open source society. So now why, if you see the, the agenda of the open source India itself, the mission is to accelerate the development and the deployment of the open source uh, in India and beyond. So it becomes very important to understand why the open source, why we need an open source. As we know, it is a consumer uh, driven means, assume that you have a product, you want to have a tea and uh, samosa and you go to a restaurant, one is ready to give the recipe because you like very much and one is ready to give the recipe, one don't want to give the recipe. Which one you choose? Definitely you choose other. Because it's a consumer driven, definitely he will trust more on the product which has a detail enough him to understand how the solution has been prepared or to change the flavor of the software as well. So the open source, why it becomes very important because once we have the details, we can change the flavor and we can try to uh, use the best. Shiva, boys will select option one. Uh -huh. Boys will select option one. <laughs> <laughs> So once it's open source, then a lot of the important is it's publicable, accessible, and everybody can contribute to those ideas. If you see the many of the big project currently we see are open source because because there it is it is really very difficult for an organization uh, to pool such expertise. When it is open source, you see thousands of developers and architects and the users the lot many will join and try to use it. So it becomes very easy to share the ideas and to make it more better. So that is the reason it's very important that most of the companies are going towards making it open source. The main is a collaboration. That is the power of the open source is about the collaboration. Now if you see the GitHub statistics of 2022, there are almost 83 million developers. So this, this should be the one of the reasons the developers should join because we see that many of the organization, I'm sure that 80% of the organization which many are not aware of this, about the open source. When you are in a normal delivery kind of thing, it's very difficult to understand. This is 200 million repositories, out of 28 million are public repositories. I mean, lot of information is available, lot of developers are also part of this. So it is important we understand, if you see some of the latest uh, statistics of the global uh, open source survey, the 77% use, use the open source and uh, they responded saying that almost 36% they have significantly increased the open source uh, project. And even the small organizations, so if you see almost 41% uh, they have started using the open source and that is a part of the strategy. And the number one reason, as I told, it's because of innovation, because a lot of ideas shared, a lot of ideas are contributed, and it's also cost reduction. And one of the barriers is lack of the internal skills. This, this gives the best opportunities or many opportunities for the developers who are willing to join to the open source because this is a current barrier where there, are a lot of, there is lack of expertise in this area. And if you see the adoption also, almost the, in UK and Europe, almost 61 percent of the, uh, they adopted open source. And even on average, it's almost 43 and contribution, Asia is the highest contributor. Almost 45 percent, uh, they, they contribute to the open source. And if you see the service market as well, there are many other opportunities, not just uh, 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 code, but there are other service, there are other areas 
And if you see that it's from 2021 to 22, almost it has grown from 24 billion to 30 billion. It means a lot of people are interested in this area and it's estimated that uh, almost in 2026, it will be 70 billion. Uh, and there are different types of services, consulting services, implementation support, maintenance, training. So there are a lot of other services around this open source, which provides a lots of opportunity. So it becomes really important to be associated with the open source. If you see the industries, banking, finance, insurance, telecom, if you see all the industries have openly adopted the open source. And it's an innovation engine. You, 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 you talk about in the area of web development, infrastructure, DevOps, mobile, machine learning, big data. This open source has been an engine for a lot of innovations. And the main backbone, as we told, the main backbone is a collaboration. That is the very much important uh, for uh, development, research, and uh, learning. This is very important if you can collaborate and think a lot. And if you see the open source in terms of uh, uh, innovation, has already told expanding the exploring the new ideas, building more partnership, associating with the open source. This helps. Uh, from the developer point of view, we can see the lot of coding skills because your code is visible. If you talk about the uh, development, because hardly in, in your team, you might have seen hardly four or five people will review your code. But when it's open source, the n number of people can review and they can give the feedback. With that, your coding skill will also improve. And you have an access to the other's code where you can learn a lot from the others, the way they code the thing. And about the, you can get, a, you will get a lot of opportunity for the real time project. Lot of communication where you can involve in the brainstorming and other things like and technology. If you see about visibility, what the visibility will get, you can make a global networking. Employability also increases. The lot of recognition. The lot many things are there when you are associated with the open source. Other than that, we also get a lot of global opportunity. Not just about the. Uh, part of a project, but you will also get exposure and uh, uh, global opportunities in uh, collaboration. The next part is something you want to add, uh, Sunil, for the wipe In the interest of time, I will just uh, quickly, this is one thing we told, is one simple step. Okay. So if you want to uh, work with open source, especially for the developers, uh, we generally uh, work with uh, different communities, we have meetup groups, uh, developers, as in students and uh, professionals. Generally, the trend what we see is that uh, maybe a hackathon, maybe a event like this, or our boot, boot camp, maybe a week or so people will be active because they are high on it. Uh, and then slowly they disappear, uh, vanish. Uh, so our, uh, whoever, is, whoever wants to contribute to open source uh, more than skill, first you need to have some kind of decision or dedication that you can be part of the open source and get some value. That's what uh, Shiva was mentioning, what are those values. It's fancy, uh, it's decorated, and it's very good. Everybody wants it. Employability, visibility, leadership, all these things. But the, it doesn't come free, right? Like free software, it doesn't come free. You need to spend some time. So personal experience is that if you can spend weekly four or five hours and wait for six months, stick to a particular community, I can guarantee you that you will start contributing, tasting what is open source. That is what you need to do. Okay. Now, when you talk about how to contribute, people will start from GitHub, ID, creation, and all these things. We have a very, very simple shortcut. Please join our Slack. Say that I want to contribute. That's it. We take care of it. Thank you so much. Thank you.